So please welcome our beloved Rabbi Rachel. Get on up here, woman. Here seems a little more appropriate. I feel like even if the mic doesn't work, everyone can still hear me, right? Ask my first grade teacher. I'm pretty good at projection. They'll tell you that. Shaloha, everyone. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you all, humbled by this big crowd and the fact that there's people that come just to hear me talk. That still kind of blows my mind, I'm not going to lie. Thank you, God for allowing me to open my heart so that others may open theirs. Light. Or a light, light, light. Full disclosure, Rev Bev sent me the topic for this week and this month. All I saw was the word light. I didn't read another word. Spirit spoke to me. And it was like, this is meant to be your topic. This is meant to be what you talk about this time. And it seems huge. Light is huge. It's too much to comprehend. It's way too big for us. But for some reason, it's what I was called to talk about. So I'm going to attempt to maybe shine a glimmer, a speckle, on light, on this very lofty concept, if you will. Because I think about all the stars in the sky and the planets and the moon and everything that's there. And each of them has an individual light, right? The moon gets bigger and brighter. It gets smaller and darker. But that light remains no matter how bright it shines. And Friday night as my daughter and I were lighting the Shabbat candles. We don't do this every week, full disclosure. Some weeks we go to night market and listen to our friends play music and dance or go out to dinner and enjoy each other and Shabbat however we can. But this Friday night we were home and we were lighting the candles and she just sat there in awe staring at the flame. And I just had this moment of like, this is what it's all about. This is what light is. In light we see and in light, we are seen. In Judaism, we are commanded, commanded, literally, to light candles at the beginning of every joyous occasion. We're commanded to light candles every Friday night on Shabbat. We're commanded to light candles at the beginning of a big Passover, Rosh Hashanah, any celebration. We're commanded to light yard site candles, which is the anniversary of someone's passing. Because in light, we see, and in light, we are seen. And I'm going to be officiating a ceremony this evening, again, a blessing at the Celebration of Life for Hawaii Care Choices, formerly Hospice, down at Reeds Bay. And it's, it's a day of a lot of light, I was thinking about. Like, wow, God, you really put me on the, on the light train, if you will, for this one. <laughs> Just going to radiate everywhere I go. But I've really been reflecting on this idea of light and this idea that we are light. That when we close our eyes and get really quiet and still and peaceful, when we're in that meditative space, if we really, really, really go into it, we can feel that light. We can see that light. There are people whose light shine when they walk into a room without them doing anything. You feel that. You feel their presence. You feel their magnificence. And to me, that's the divine light. That's the light of God. In Hebrew, we use the word or to describe divine emanations of God that roughly translate to light because it's too big for us to comprehend. When you see someone walk into a room sparkling and shining their light, to me, that's the light of God that you're looking at. That's a person who knows they are supported by the divine. That's a person who is confident in a space of surrender. That's a being who wholly embodies the divine light that we all are, are, our, whatever. You are it. I believe that when we take our last breath, we go back into that light. 
when we take our first breath, we come into that light. Life and death are very close. We hear people with near-death experiences talk about seeing a light, going into a light. I've had far too many of those experiences to comprehend, but the one that comes to mind is the birth of my daughter. After, it's not something I talk about often because it was actually a pretty traumatic experience. Oftentimes we think of birth as being this like beautiful, miraculous experience, which it is, but there is a darkness to it. And to me, I brought in the lightest being on this planet, but man, did she have to come in a lot of darkness because she needed that to shine. And after 37 hours of back labor and emergency surgery and everything else, all I remember is seeing and feeling this bright white light. And then I opened my eyes and there was a doctor standing over me who said, wow, we're glad you're here. We didn't know if you'd come back to us or not. Your daughter is healthy and beautiful. That's light. Going into that space of darkness, that space of fear and unknowing where nothing is guaranteed. But surrendering and trusting that there is something bigger there for us to rest in. There was a lot of darkness that followed that, but it gave me an opportunity to shine my light so much brighter. At every moment, I know that God chose me and God chose you. I think I've said this mantra before, that my go-to mantra is I am the divine rainbow radiant reflection of God's love and light. Because to me, that's what God is. And that's what we were put here to do. Reflect that space. I don't believe that a divine presence or a divine power can make any mistakes. I don't believe our creator does anything wrong. I believe that we talk about light at the end of the tunnel because we have to go through darkness in order to get there. And it's those moments where we are called to shine so much brighter. The moon has to work just a little harder to light up the darkness. And when the moon gets darker, the stars come in and shine bright to take its place. There is always light. Even when we can't see it, we were put there to reflect it. So I just feel like light might be a way of describing that which is indescribable. We can't comprehend God. We can't comprehend what is bigger than us. We will spend our whole lives questioning and many people might say that they know or have a vast understanding. You should run from those people because those people are full of it. <laughs> no one really knows what that means. But I do feel like we get an opportunity to reflect that unknowing. And that unknowing is confidence. That unknowing is surrender. That unknowing is a light that is bigger than us. The spark of creation, the spark of death, the spark of what is that is so much bigger than us. That word or keeps coming through, that Hebrew word for light. And I keep mentioning this because there is no real translation a lot of times into English from Hebrew. I was talking to an Israeli friend about this the other day and she was like, but Rabbi, it does not comp compute. And I was like, I get it, I get it. It's, there are just some words, like in the Hawaiian language, right? There are words that just don't come across. But this word is meant to be incomprehensible. This word is meant to be beyond our comprehension. A divine emanation of God is not something that we can ever truly know. We can see it and let it reflect back to us. We can feel it in our heart and our being and our soul. But our brains will never comprehend. Light doesn't live in the mind to me. Light lives in the heart. 
when my heart reflects to you, when your heart reflects back to me, when I see you in this space. We talk in Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, about the tree of life or our energy centers, about how God comes down to emanate through us. And there's an opening in that tree right at our heart. Think like Jesus on the cross. To me, that's what that was, from a heart space open, connecting what is below to what is above, right here. Everybody wants to say the brain, the brain, the center of the chain. Nah, that's not it. <laughs> They've actually done studies that your heart is what transmits the signals to your brain. So to me, that light, that breath that we take in at every moment, right? The om, the ha, the light that we are and the light that we are breathing in comes into our heart and then chooses how to come out. And sometimes it's just a simple reflection. So I feel like my message here today is that. Where can you reflect a little brighter? Where can you trust a little more? Because light doesn't come from holding on. You can't hold on to a candle to feel the flame. But what can you do? You can see yourself in it. You can look at that light that burns without someone having to hold it, without someone having to cling to it, without a human being have to do a damn thing but light it up. And it goes. We are the same. All we have to do is light it up, ask to shine, ask to reflect, choose to be the light. And we will be the light. We are that space. We are that conduit. We are that energy that light is begging to flow through at any moment. And when the time comes for us to take our last breath, the same way we took our first one, we can trust in the knowing that as a light burns, as a yard site candle is litten, as a memory lives on, our light lives on. Even if we leave our bodies, our light remains. Our spirit remains. Because we're all in this spiral of light. There is something bigger than us that is holding space for that candle to burn. And whatever it is that's bigger than us that's holding space for that candle to burn is holding space for you to burn. Is holding space for you to shine. For you to be that light and reflect the essence of godliness that you truly are. Always supported never alone in any space. The question is, can you stay out of your own way? It's my question always. Mine likes to get caught in it. Earthly crap likes to get caught in it. All the woulds and coulds and shoulds and other people's drama that comes in and likes to tear us down. Their darkness, right? Calling us to shine brighter. Calling us to let go more. What happens to a flame if you grab it? It goes out. It extinguishes. But when you step back and give it the space to be, what happens? It burns. It shines. It reflects. It glows. It lights. So in those moments of darkness, you can come into your light just a little more. You can let go just a little more. I know, it sounds crazy. Who wants to let go when things are going crazy? No one. But that's the test. Can we step back in darkness, in light, in any moment and truly be the light? So I got a little something, something that came through from this Jew from my heart straight to you. Okay, I didn't write that down. That's just, <laughs> that just came out just now. Oh, all right. <laughs> Here we go. 
It can almost seem trite how much we talk about light and how we're being called to choose to shine bright, to choose love not given to fright, to choose to be happy when we want to be right, to choose to let go when we want to hold tight, just look up at the moon who lights up the night. We can shine in the darkness and reach new heights. This idea of light seems like too much to know. It's too much to grasp and just leaves me like, whoa, we're all just actors in this divine show, put here to reflect so that we may grow, to choose to shine bright when others go low, into the darkness, the light we tow. Always reflecting, fast or slow, you are light. Just know this, yo. <laughs> there is so much to say, I could go on all day, about the light that we can choose to betray, how from the divine we continue to stray, being called to the light to find the way. We need the divine, we need to pray, we need to shine bright, come what may. To be the light, keep ego at bay, reflect the divine in a world gone cray. The Hebrew word or means light for sure, but it also calls us to know that there's more, that this divine is pure light, we are this at our core, and it's darkness that helps us to open the door. Love and light is all there is, and when you know this, you can choose to give because it's our light which will always live. We are the essence of the divine, and it's this light we have been called to shine. It can seem overwhelming, too often I whine, but this light is yours and this light is mine. We were put here to be reflections of God. I can feel my ancestors behind me, they nod. Knowing this truth is absolute, the divine light we cannot refute. Our earth and our spirit we continue to pollute, being called to return back to our roots. Dismantle the patriarchy, eat the damn fruit. Apples are delicious and I'm sure Adam was cute. <laughs> I couldn't resist, I'm sorry. The truth about light, I'm not sure we can know. Until it's our time, we are meant to go. But you can know it in moments where your energy grows, you feel your breath and your heart glow. Shining always fast and slow, the concept of reflection just leaves me like, whoa. So when you see the light reflect back to you, just know that's exactly what you were put here to do, to shine your light to yourself stay true. We are all reflections, many or few. We all feel the light, Christian, Muslims, Hindus, every culture on earth speaks of light too. The reflection of the divine, a bright rainbow hue, beyond our comprehension, this light is not new. Shining our light, I know we grew, put here for a purpose with no one in lieu all chosen to be in the divine light crew. Always supported, never alone. It is in light we know and are known. Eternal flames, we are constantly shown. We are all light in a body on loan. Reflecting the one in all colors and tones, it's in nature and community, not in your phone. The light, <laughs> The light within, we have been called to hone. You are light. Shaloha. Shalom. Thank you, everybody. Stop it. You all, thank you.